Okay, so I'm gonna do a little drawing tutorial here for you guys. Um, this is by request, by the way. So I'm gonna do this in Autodesk Sketchbook. I don't normally use this for sketching on the computer. I do use it for sketching on a tablet, um, on a Galaxy Note. But, um, I don't normally use this for sketching, so I'm just going to start with the pencil tool, and I'm going to make it a little smaller. And, uh, today I'll show you guys how to draw a face. Most people start with, like, a circle. You know, you can make your own circle type thing, or you could go up here and grab a circle out of that. But, uh, I'm not gonna do that. So, we're gonna draw a head. Make a circle like this. And then do the rest of the face. Do, like, a facing straight on. You're gonna bring the chin outside of the circle. Some people draw a circle and then they draw the whole head inside the circle because they make the circle the size that they want the head to be. But that's not how I do it. And sometimes I just sketch the head without the circle at all. Uh, I want the chin to be down about there. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but then you have a basic head shape. And now we can darken. Oops, how did I do that? <laughs> Story. Okay, so I like, to, I like to darken the outside of the head. Sometimes I end up erasing some of the inside, but anyway. So here you have a basic face shape. I tend to draw in like an anime or manga or comic book type tile so they often come out a little less realistic but uh, when you're starting out you shouldn't be afraid to use a lot of references take photos or find photos or get books or watch other videos on YouTube find something that works for you for learning so have basic face shape here and um, in reality the eyes come at about the middle of the head so you can make guidelines for yourself do that and the nose if you do this properly come somewhere about where your bottom of your circle is, but I made the head extra long. I probably put the nose about here and then the mouth, the middle of the mouth, about here, so you have room for the upper lip and the bottom lip. <coughs> and then the ears, about where the eyes are. And you, you can draw like half oval type shape to mark in your ears. Over the lips. And now you're ready to start putting in features. Um, you can either keep a drawing on the sketch or where are my layers? Make a new layer for your features, whatever works for you um, for the initial sketch. Where's his nose up there, and then I do the eyes. And I dislike drawing straight forward. I prefer a three-quarter view for 
throwing a face. We will go over that later. See that I was smaller. You know what? For this easy way. I'm just gonna edit this real quick. That's the nice thing about digital. Instead of you don't have to erase. If you change the size of something, you can just select it and then use your transform tool to make it bigger or smaller. So in some cases, especially if you're doing everything all in one layer, sometimes you do end up having to erase stuff. Yeah. Okay, so it's hard to make things perfectly symmetrical. This does have a symmetry drawing feature if you wanted to use that when you're drawing a face, but sometimes things come out looking a little weird. Because in reality, nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical. And actually, your brain will look a little bit strange if it's exact. And then. If you're drawing like an anime manga type of drawing, you don't have to make a detailed nose and then a mouth. That's not the way I normally make a mouth. I usually do like leave a break in the center. Uh, and then I think your nose is still up too high, but the mouth is too low. <laughs> And the lip dips a little bit in the center, and then I sort of flush out the bottom. Yeah. See that side longer than the other. <laughs> it's really hard to do. Okay. And then. Eyebrows. They will define that part, and then the eyebrows go up here. So we'll have lower eyebrows. You can make skinny eyebrows, fat eyebrows, whatever kind of eyebrow you like. You can draw just a line. You can, I like to give them a little bit more usually on the, on the girls. On the guys, I usually give them pretty heavy eyebrows. Um, yes. See, for you guys, I probably should have finished the eyes first. I tend to kind of have like an ADD type way of working on my art. Like, if I were to do a full figure, I'd kind of flesh it out and then just start working on random parts. Like, if I get tired of working on one part, I go to another part and then come back. And eventually, it all kind of gels together. Okay, and then you draw in the pupils, and then decide where the light's coming from to make the little reflective part. Or it also helps to show what direction they're looking in. Essentially, looking straight at you where I put it is fine. Um, and then usually after I make the pupil is when I'll do the upper eyelid. Just to thicken it up a little bit. And then... And eyelash. I used to try and draw in like all the eyelashes for a long time to make it look more realistic and then I gave up on doing that. I sort of go with a more comic book style. Or you would just give them the cat's eye outside like that or my other method of doing it is I just do this at the top and it gives them kind of a gothic look once you color this all in. I do like that. If I, you know, it makes them look like they're, it's simple, but it makes it look like they're wearing really heavy eyeliner and mascara and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to see if I can get rid of that now. So there you have 
basic face and she has a basic neck which isn't quite right. <laughs> Holy crap, the eraser is big. Now the eraser is too small. <laughs> uh, that's a pencil. I'll just stop that there since we're only doing the head. Uh, some people in their pencil drawings like to put in the shadows when you're sketching. So it helps them later when they go for colors to know where the shading goes. Maybe something like that. And above the eyes. We use like lines to show where the shading would be. Do that. And then when I do hair, I always do hair on a second layer. So I already made the second layer, so I'm just clicking up here. Um, and then how much detail I put into the ears ends up being based on how much hair, like what type of hairstyle you want to give them. And some people like to do like this with a sort of really, literally just box in the bangs and box in where the hair goes. I tend to put in like a little more detail usually when I'm doing. Oops, I hate that. Holding my pen from the tablet the wrong way, and then it kind of comes up like this. So yeah, I sort of, I sort of just kind of go for it. And if it doesn't work out, then I erase it and start over. I don't tend to box in the hair. I just sort of. kind of go for it and you should have fun with the hair I mean you can get you know it's probably for me one of the easiest parts to do I guess but sometimes I feel kind of uninspired and then you know there's plenty of resources you can google like anime hairstyles or comic book hairstyles and see the kind of work that people do for their drawings of course you know getting like hair cutting books like you know hairstylists have usually have books of different hairstyles Looking for something like that might be helpful if you will need a bunch of ideas for hairstyles. Um, yeah, so let's just yeah, go for something like that. And then should have some over here to and now she has hair and then if you want to clean up your sketch you can go back and like erase parts so you don't get confused like uh, that's a headline right there so I'll take out the ear and then I'd probably go back and erase Oops, I erased part of her ear. You do see some of her ear on this side only. So uh, I'm going to put in the ear. There's a little triangle there that's called the tragus. And then you just make a little, to make it really simple, make the tragus right there. And then just make a loop back around. And then her hair is covering the center of the ear, but I normally put in here a little line. So let's go back up here. Probably might look better to have another little piece of bang there. And I'm gonna fill in the hair. There we go. And you have your basic face. So um 
And then if I were going to draw an entire body, I'd have several other layers. I'd do the clothing and I'd do all that stuff, accessories and whatnot, each on individual layers. And then when I'm ready to do the inking, I go here to the little dotted circle thing on the layer palette and I go merge with below until I have all my layers merged and then make a new layer on top for the ink pen. So with layer one, when you want to go for inking, you do, I bring the opacity of this layer down. It makes it easier to see the ink. And some people like to use colored lines for their inking. Like if your character is blonde, they'd use a little bit darker than blonde line for the hair and then something just a little bit darker than the skin tone for the outlines for the skin tone and stuff like that. But I prefer straight up black. So then I'm going to go over to the inking pen um, it's just too fat. Bring it down somewhere around here. And of course we keep the opacity at 100 because we want to have nice black lines when you are inking. So then I just zoom in to the parts that I want to work on. Uh, use the mouse wheel or go up here to the zoom rotate move canvas tool. So I've got this clicked. Then I go up to the top bar up here and I'm selecting this one the steady stroke and then I don't need 34 we're doing hair unless you're doing the really long parts 23 is probably fine so if it's if you're, you're trying to find a, a, a number here where it, you can draw a smooth line without dragging without it being too long so otherwise then you'll drag your pen off the screen and it'll mess things up but if your number's too low, your line won't be as clean. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm gonna start here, and you can see I'm only putting light pressure on it. But then when I come around, put some harder pressure on it, and then I release real quick. It's you know. It's if you already know a bit about drawing, then you know how to get that kind of a sharper line at the end. But it's, you move the pen quickly as you're picking it up off of the tablet. And then sometimes you're going to have to go over your line twice. The nice thing about drawing with the pen and the tablet is the pressure get like that so <clears throat> you have the nice pressure sensitivity so you can get a very nice line you don't want your lines to all be the same width it's not interesting or pleasing to the eye so even if you do it once and it comes out you know too much the same you can go back over it or erase it and try it again this is a longer line. I'm going to move the slider for that thing up a little bit. And then I come around the corner because that was too much pressure. And like that. And then, as you see, I put too much pressure on it too quickly. So, this line turned too thick too soon. Um, if you find that your pen is too sensitive, is under the edit menu stylus responsiveness and you can turn it down if you want to I like mine to be very responsive but be more challenging so we're gonna try that again that's a little better now you see I give it a little more pressure at the end See that line? Not very interesting at all. It didn't have much. So let's go back again and fill that in. And then for really longer lines, I zoom out. Unfortunately, the only way that you can do really long lines is to zoom out and then turn up the steady stroke thing. 90 is probably too high. And then try to get 
the dot in the center of the crosshairs on the black line from the, the closest piece of hair and then start dragging it downwards tracing your line and there you go you can see how it got thicker and thinner again you want to try and vary your pen pressure to get those more interesting lines and um, I'll show you guys some other time differences between inking pens and other programs and you may see why I like this one because I find it like especially in programs that are like for drawing comics like M Manga Studio it's just the pen for inking it doesn't it gives nice lines but it's not it doesn't look like real world inking pens and this inking pen in this program is really like using a, a dip pen so that's why I like this one so basically you just continue all the way around I hit that button on the pen again And continue to do this until you have the hair all the way done. Now see that's how I went out way too far. It's just a matter of practice. You're just gonna have to do it over and over again and especially when you're using the steady stroke. It just it takes some getting used to the fact that your cursor is down here and the little line that's actually drawing is up here, so you have to play with that setting until you get one that works for you I'm not trying too hard here to do like a fabulous inking job but not too bad Oops, didn't start where I wanted it to pull up more and then go down You can see here these two lines are like the same width for most of it. This seems to be like my problem is remembering to vary the pen pressure because I tend to keep the same amount of pressure on my hand all the time because I'm too busy concentrating on the line that I'm drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the hair and then we'll come back and work on the rest of the face okay so the next part of this that I'm going to do is to um, do the lines for the face I've made a new layer over here and put it below the hair I guess it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna take the steady stroke down 11 17 to 23 is good for doing face details and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the hair. Uh, that one's a little thick. <laughs> Oops. Let me hit that button. And we're just going to outline. Uh, some people like their eyes to show through the hair, like over here. I don't normally do that, so I'm going to stop my line there. And then I'm going to do this part. Oops. Actually, let me fix these lines up a little bit. And then I'll start down here a little bit more to draw the highlight. And then the people. I don't like how that one came out, so we're going to do it again <laughs> until we get it right. Not round enough. Rounder. And that gets filled in solid black. Um, and then you can do. To thicken the top of the eye. And 
like way too long. So then we're gonna come back in here with the hard eraser. That's too big. No, that's too small. Yeah, that's about right. I'm just gonna take some of it off. And there you have an eye. And then you would just do the other one. Um, if you want to go a little more realistic, you can put the crease of the eyelid in there. Usually we use a pretty light line for that. And then you can fill in the eyebrow at any time you wish. do her other eye Part is done. And then her mouth. As you draw, you can, you know, make final adjustments as necessary because it's on the computer. If you mess it up, you can always fix it. There. Like I wanted to make her lips just a little bit wider. So then you have your facial features done. And the next part we'll need to do then is to outline the face. That was a really long line. You don't need to feel like you need to do it in one shot. We're going to get a pretty, not 103, a uh, pretty long, steady stroke. I'm going to put the cursor right on the line for the edge of the hair. And we still have the eraser turned on, that doesn't help. <laughs> okay. So. See, that came out doofy over on that side. So. Maybe what we need to do is do it in two takes. You see, I've had this line up and down the center and then I will just stop and then start from here again uh, this is one of those that sometimes takes me several tries to get until I'm happy with it and to do the ear I'm going to bring the steady stroke back down quite a bit Happy with that one. Alright, we'll start with the top of the ear. Not going how I wanted it to. <laughs> top of the ear. And the bottom of the ear. And then fill in the inside details. There we go. And then her neck. And at this point, um, you could go back and fix up any of your lines. Like here, this is a little bit over. I'm just gonna. You can use any of the tools with the steady stroke. But, um, 
Yeah. Sometimes when fixing your line art, it's helpful to use the eraser with the steady stroke. Not always, but sometimes. So then, once you've got your line art, how you like it. Uh, you see here we have multiple layers here. I'm going to click on the top layer and hold down on the dotted circle and then merge with below. Now we have all our line art on one layer. So you don't need to think that you need to do everything on one layer because you don't. Use as many layers as makes you comfortable and then you can just merge them later. So the final step of doing the face is coloring and we'll get right to that in a second. Okay, so coloring. Uh, in order to color, we're going to need a new layer over here in the layers palette. I'm going to make a new one um, for coloring, especially when you're first starting out. You should probably use several layers. Again, people who are really good do all their coloring on one layer, a lot of them. Um, <coughs> which is possible, it just, you know, requires more paying attention to what you're doing. So, layer 6, I'm going to start with the skin. Also, once you get to this point, you can turn your sketch off. And I'm going to use the Copic markers for this. I'm going to select the light brown square up here, which gives you the skin tones. Um, unfortunately, this one doesn't help. Yes, it does. Um, there are a couple ways to go about coloring and the way I do it usually depends on what direction I pick the lighting to come from and that's something that you have to consider when you are doing I'm sorry my dog wants to play <laughs> she's coming over here with her ball uh, I don't have time for you right now um so where was I oh yeah so considering lighting directions you have to decide does the light come from over here is it coming straight on from this side or from behind even um, so if the light was coming from the left your shadows would be on the right side of her face if it's coming from the right your shadows are mostly going to be on the left side of her face if the light's coming from straight on the shadows are going to be to both sides of the face and you'll have the lightest part in the center and if your light's coming from behind you're going to have a light part right around the edge and you put the darkest color in the middle <coughs> so that's something you have to consider um, to help you you might want to take objects in a small lamp and put them around so you can see um, where shadows fall on things it might help you to get a doll or something to see how shadows are cast on faces, you know, or volunteer if you have a, a, a kid, a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, <coughs> and borrow them. <laughs> so, um, you can do that. And then, when I color with Copics in real life, there's two ways to go about it. Either if I decide that the highlights are not going to be very strong, then I take a base color, I'll just do an example here, I take a base color and then I do the shading over it and then I would go back with the base color and blend them together but like I explained in my tools overview video these don't blend as well as I do in real life so That's a little difficult. Um, the other way to do it is to put down your shadows first. Do it like that. And get all your shadows in. And then to go in with the skin color, fill in basics and then work your way lighter like I said if this were in real life you could blend together and then you finally have your white space the white space here in the middle and if you wanted a lot of white space you could use the number zero colorless blender to 
blend it out a little better. But um, yeah, that is how your choices for uh, coloring. I like to start if you're making somebody with pretty light skin, either E00 or E00, and then I usually use E11 for the shadows on very light skin and E01 to blend the two colors together. Um, sometimes I use E13 for like a lot darker shadows and then if you're starting with somebody who's like tan or medium color skin tones you might start with the E11 and if they have darker skin you might start with E13 um, this one doesn't have 15. 15 is just slighter than 13. I don't see it in here. So, um, that is that. Uh, I'm not sure that the E-Zeros are going to show up on my monitor. I've noticed that when I make videos, this software I'm using tends to wash light colors out. So I really apologize in advance. So I'm gonna, st um, I'm gonna do a straight on light. So we'll make the shadows to the sides of her face. I'll do the shadows first. We'll try it that way. And don't worry about going into the eye area. You can come back in a reset. So there's usually a shadow is on the crease of the eye. And in here with the nose, I think my, actually we're going to start that over, I'm sorry, my density is up way too high. Um, when you're using the Copic markers on this, you want to keep the density down pretty low so you can build up the color just because the blending doesn't work very well. Okay. We have, I'm going to put in some shadows over here. The hair cast shadows also. So we have shadow there, but we'd also have more of a shadow under here because there's two pieces of hair. And around the bottom of the chin. And then under her lip. But then I leave a little white on the chin, or at least I try to. Um, markers do bleed a little bit in real life and we're using kind of a fat one here so the truth of the matter is it doesn't always work out the way I hoped but um, chins are round chins stick out a little bit so you would have a white spot there and obviously the nose is gonna have probably the most white um, and it's actually we get a little bit of a shadow under the nose and we'll do up in here okay so that was E11 so I'm gonna take the E00 and see this doesn't look too bad because I have the density down very low so And all we're doing here is just going just slightly outside of where we colored previously. <coughs> and then I use the E triple zero as my final blending marker. Actually, this has come out look pretty blended. Uh, down here. This isn't even coming out too bad, actually, at all. Um, now you have.
have like basic face shading, so yeah, this is not like leaving dramatic shadows or anything. This is really basic light shading and stuff like that. So once you have that down, then you can go back in and fill in parts where you'd like to have it a little darker. I might take the E13 now and I probably turn this size down a little bit. And then do... Just a little bit in the places where it would be the darkest. <laughs> so I might have to turn that size back up a little bit. Um, so I'm using the E13 and I'm using the E1 to try and to try and blend it out a little bit. It doesn't work very nicely. As I've complained about multiple times. Sorry. to take and then do the other side darker like where the hair meets the skull and blend that out a little bit and don't worry if you're bringing your marker into your hair because you can either erase that or you do the hair on a separate layer and it won't matter anyway <coughs> all right i want to darken that up with the e11 just a little bit before i go back with the e13 That should be a little bit darker. And I'm gonna come down here and the head would cast a darker shadow on the neck, so I should do that. And then I'll go back with the E11 and try and blend this out a little bit. And now we have just a little bit better looking shading. It's a little more dramatic. Well, how dramatic you get with your shading, well, it sort of comes with practice. Like, I don't know, I found out that or found rather that when I was younger and stuff like that I would be worried about messing it up like on the computer you can do it over and over and over again so you can you know if you really mess up you can even delete the entire layer and start from scratch but I was always afraid of you know messing up the shading and not getting it right so I would be very sparing with my shadows so it's something I've always been working towards is to use more dramatic shading and that's something you know you achieve by working at it over time and just experimenting you know, right here by her nose let's go back with the 13 there's a little bit of white next to that line and there shouldn't be because it's dark there and the 11 Actually over here, I'm going to go in with the 11 a little bit, and then the 0. I had to recess a little bit. You can actually bring some shading along where the lower eyelid should be. Uh, and that doesn't look very good, so trying to blend it out. Don't go overkill with the colorless blender because it will just make your color go away. need a bigger brush. There. It sort of blends it out a little bit. I'm gonna blend it out a little bit. Okay. 
so let's say that we are satisfied for the sake of this tutorial with the uh, shading otherwise I'll sit here all day and mess with it um all right so we're going to bring back the layers palette and we're going to make uh, another layer for the um let's do the facial features next all right so if we're going to do the facial features we do need to clean up here uh, Copic markers have no white <laughs> So if you want white, you're going to have to go in, either erase where you don't want the Copic marker, or you're going to have to put in white with one of the paintbrush tools. Uh, that one, clean that up just a little bit. Okay, so we'll keep zoomed in on eye. I usually start with a light color and color in the entire eye, so we'll like uh, blue green zero one is nice. Oops, that pen is way too big. <laughs> pen is way too big. I don't want to do too much cleaning up. All right, we have blue green zero one, and then we'll need a pretty dark blue, and, and we're gonna need to make the pen pretty small, and then. too big. Alright, we'll bring the pen down size-wise all the way. We can just leave. You can do basic eye shading like this. Just use two colors and make sure you see some of the lighter color through it. And then let's clean that up. Clean that up a little bit. Alright, and if you want to be good, eyes are not flat. They do have a bit of a shading to them. If you look at your own carefully. So we'll go in here around the edge. If you draw more realistic eyes, you have the little pink part right here, but I'm not gonna do that. And then I just go around the edge and give it a little bit of shading. Maybe we'll blend this a little bit to give it that three-dimensional look. Just a little bit. <coughs> oh, and I just realized I forgot to color her ear. We'll come back to that at the end. I usually forget something and then have to go back and do it. Oh, look at that. And then I forgot to put on, to do the eye on a separate layer. I didn't do that. It is a terrible tragedy. Alright. Do the eye. Um, what am I using? I forget. I'm using 18. That look right? No, that does not look right. Uh, maybe we're using 9. I really forget. This is horrible. That looks better. So we come back over here. Do that. Clean your work up. And then go back to the cool gray. And then again, just a little bit of shading in there, and your eyes are done. Yay. Okay, I didn't mean to do the eyes on the same layer as the skin, so I'm going to go up to the other layer that I made now to do the lips. If we go outside of the line, it's going to be very difficult to fix with the color that we're using. Um, let me see, what color do we have here? Do not appear to have my favorite color. Hmm. I usually do lips with R43. Maybe it's on this one. Here we go. R43 and then R27 over here. Bigger Copic marker. And then we'll just do the same thing we've been doing. Coloring, coloring. <coughs> I'm not sure if I, like I don't think I'm really good at explaining my technique as hard. It's just 
you have to play and figure out what works for you. So if she were wearing really shiny lip gloss or something, there'd be a nice bright highlight. And then you could just leave that as white to begin with if you want, or you can go back and erase part of your work later. And I'm going to make a smaller one and bring in the red in certain spots. done coloring in your mouth. Just clean up outside the lines. <coughs> there. Okay, now for the hair. And always I always do the hair on a separate layer. Oopsie, let's see here. We need to pick a color for the hair. Um, I'll start off by doing the shadows again. We're gonna go something pretty dark. This is E47, which is dark brown. So because we have our light coming straight on, the um, darkest part of the hair again to the outside. And then <coughs> we need to pick... Hmm. I have E18 and I find in the real markers, see, and it's true here too, E18, copper, and the dark brown are not too different from each other. The one is just slightly reddish. Alright, there's E15. We do have E15. Looked all over for it earlier and couldn't find it. In real life, E18 and E15 blend together pretty nice. Nothing of the sort here. And the 11 from the skin tone palette and then leaving a highlight in the middle. This is not working out how I wanted it to at all. Let's see if we can... Just say no. This is the colors do not blend well in this program. The skin tone ones are not too bad, but this is. I'm going to have to go for something even darker in order to try and fix this. Oh man! I wonder what color E25 is. That would be. Accessible. It's only something like in between. 57 maybe? No. 87? It's too green. That's pretty green also. Let's try E29. Oh, E29, that's pretty good. In between color here. Okay. Let's see, what else do we have for color E25? 
Wait on another 18 minute work. Let's see. Unfortunately, this is just going to be a process of playing with it until you find something that you like. Obviously, you don't have to use the Copic markers in this program. Um, now I'm just going with the color with Blender to try and fix it, sort of. Some of the colors sort of blend together better than some of the other ones in this, but I don't find it a faithful representation of Copic markers in the real world. So, um... That's sort of how I do the hair, and doing the rest of the hair is actually going to take a while, so I'm going to just fast forward the rest of this video, and you can just sit there and watch. Still find something there with my love. It's understood. Send with my love. And my love does it Okay, so as you can see here, I have finished coloring in the hair, I did the eyebrows, and then I went around and uh, cleaned up around the outside of the line art and stuff where the marker went outside the lines, mostly. There's a few spots that didn't get it. And basically, at this point, you're finished with your drawing, and then you can save it. If you haven't saved it already, uh, go to File, Save As. Um, Autodesk uses a format called TIFF. I don't use it. Um, if I want to save 
with all the layers I save it as Photoshop and the one thing that's really annoying about Autodesk and you need to be aware of this when you're saving your file is that I had this file open previously um, Mech Girl 1 and that's not what I want to save this as so you have to be very careful not to just open it and hit save immediately um, you want to make sure that you're not going to overwrite another file that you had open because it will always try and title your file as the name of the previous document that you were working on so we're going to save that as Photoshop and then I could open it in Photoshop or open it in any other program that supports Photoshop documents to work on it and if you want to save it to share it on the internet go to save copy as uh, I use PNG files and then save a copy as PNG uh, PNG as lossless when you save something as a, a JPEG it's has compression and if you don't save it at the highest quality you'll see a uh, pixelation and uh, stuff in your work so I usually use PNG the file size is much larger than the JPEG so if you do need to have a smaller file size version for whatever reason then save it both but um yeah usually for everything I save it as the PNG file now you are done drawing your face and that is the end of this tutorial feel free to leave me any comments and I will try and answer your questions and that is all for this one I will see you guys next time